Hello everyone. I needed to restart the recording because I was bloody speaking for half an hour and the recording got stopped in five minutes. Okay, blunder, big blunder. So I have to restart where I was. I don't know where I was. Obstacles. So, last time we were on Sanskrit, we studied the basics of Sanskrit and we studied all the things, we understood the basic, how Sanskrit is made, we also understood how words are made. Now we have to, now we are going into a bit of details, okay, like everything, how everything is connected in Sanskrit, how everything is connected with each other, okay, as I told you, when we break about, when we break about, break apart words, okay, we break about words, the first thing in the word, the prefix of the word is from where the thing is getting energy, what is the input, which element is the input? The ending, the suffix of the word is what is the fruit you are getting. Okay. And the middle portion, the middle portion is how it is sustained. Okay. What is the process behind it? What is the process it is going into? Okay. So we are going to talk about many things, but primarily let's talk about how words are made. Okay. And how everything is connected inside the body. So as I, as I said, sun, sun is connected with 12 meridians, 12 meridians of the body. Okay. Let's talk about Chandi Yoga Upanishad. Okay, Chandi Yoga Upanishad. So Chandi Yoga Upanishad says a lot about chanting on the sounds of elements. Okay, that is where you, you understand a lot about Sanskrit. Okay, if you want to get deeper sense about Sanskrit, go and read Chandi Yoga Upanishad. It is, it is giving you like idea about the sounds of different elements, okay? Like the sound of uh, air. The sound of air is view. V Y U H. View. Okay. Then, if you want to correct the air element of your body, meditate. Meditate on the sound of view. Similarly, the sound of earth is how. H A U H A U. How. Okay. Similarly, the sound of Indra or the senses is tat. 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 Okay. So there are different sounds, and we you would understand more when you are uh, into the Chandi Upanishad. But it, it, it will give you a basic deep idea about how Sanskrit is connected with the Swar Shastras. Okay, the Sangeet Shastras. That is why it is Avina. Okay, what is Avina? Let's go into Sangeet. Okay, the how our Sangeet and Raj and everything is made up of. Okay, let, let's go deeper into it. To, just to study and understand how deeply our Sanskrit is made. Okay, let, let's go deeper into it. So, what is the basic instrument of Saraswati? The basic instrument of Saraswati is Veena. Is the Veena? Okay, so let's see what is Veena. The recording, right? Yes. So let's see what is Veena. Okay, consider the Veena is nothing else but a representation of your skull, your pelvis, and your spine. Okay, so this is the Veena. The representation of your pelvis, skull, and the spine connected with the pelvis and the skull. So that's why it is said that those who know how to play Veena are masters or are Saraswati. Like Saraswati has blessed them. But what is the real essence of Veda? The real essence of Veda is to understand how to play this internal Veena, 
how to play the veena inside your body. You don't have to play the exterior veena, you have to play the interior veena. Now, how the interior veena is played? See, first of all, whenever you talk, okay, like whenever I am talking or anybody is talking and whoever is talking, it is the vocal cord that is vibrating inside your throat. The vocal cord is vibrating and the vibrations are going out. So my vibrations are going out from my throat and reaching outside. Those vibrations are coming out and reaching towards you. Okay, so whenever the vocal cords vibrate, okay, this is the vocal cord. Now, it, now whenever I say something like, like I say oh, I say ah, I say ooh, I say hello, okay, whatever the hell I am saying, these vocal cords are vibrating. Okay, so whenever these vocal cords vibrate, what happens? Whenever these vocal cords vibrate, what happens? The sound is going outside. So that is why you are hearing what I say because when I say hi, there is a vibration in my throat. With that vibration, the sound is going outside, the sound is again reaching your ear. But the vocal cord is a sphere. So whenever it vibrates, okay, whenever it vibrates, there is a vibration which is also going internally inside the body. That is what the Chandi Yoga Upanishad teach. Okay. So there is a vibration of vocal cords which are also going inside your body and there is a vibration of vocal cords which are also going outside the body. The study, understanding of those vibrations which are going inside the body when your vocal cord vibrates is into Chandi Yoga Upanishad. Is the real art of meditation and chanting. Very small amount of people know this. Okay, very small amount of people know this. Because like this meditation has become a business. It has become a time pass these days. Nobody knows what real meditation is. Okay. You take a group or a group of people are meditating somewhere. They are just sitting and chanting one word. Okay, you are giving a good energy outside. I am not denying. But there is no internal evolution. Okay. What you are changing? You are just cha changing the environment outside. You are not changing anything inside you. So first of all, it is a waste of time and a bullshit thing if 10 people are meditating or you, you collect hundreds of people and make them meditate in front of you. It is a bullshit thing. Okay. Uh, 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 why do you think Shiva was all over when he was meditating? What is the need of isolation then? What is the need of isolation? The primary need of isolation is you don't have to get distracted from the external voices. You have to focus on the vibrations of vocal cord which are going inside. You don't have to focus on the vibrations of the vocal cord going outside. Okay, so when 100 people are meditating, 100 people are chanting, what can you hear? You can hear the voice of 100 people, which is exactly not what you have to do. Which is exactly what you don't have to do. Why do you want to hear someone else is chanting and he is sitting on your behalf, on your side? I don't get a point. Because what is meditation? Meditation is understanding the vibration of the vocal cord which are going inside the body. When you can hear those small peculiar vibrations which are going inside the body when you are sitting in an isolated place. Why do our rishis, why do our, uh, 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 what do you say, munis preferred high altitude places? Because when you are sitting on a mountain, and over there, if you are chanting, oh, okay, you chant, oh, over there, what happened? The sound is going far away. And before that sound comes, okay, before the echo of the sound comes back to your ear, in the small, minute part of the time, at that time, you can realize, understand, and catch exactly where the sound is deflected inside the body. Getting my point? So whenever you are speaking, there is a sound which is going outside the body. There is also a sound which is deflecting inside the body. The vibration of vocal cords are also going inside the body. There is also a vibration which is going inside your body when you are speaking. Obviously it is. 
the vocal cord is not just directed outside every voice is going outside okay there is also vibration which is going inside that is why you feel thirsty after talking too much that is why this throat moves when i am speaking okay if i am if i am talking like this can't you see the throat moving because the vibrations are also going inside okay but nobody catches those vibrations okay and what we have to do in meditation in meditation we are catching those vibrations which are going inside the body we don't have to focus on vibrations which are going outside the body okay when you speak something it is the fire element when you chant a mantra it is the fire element which is going out okay but it is something that you exhaust you have exhausted it what good it what good it brings to you it doesn't bring any good to you okay doesn't it bring any good to you you are actually ex uh, exalting that thing okay so many people say think that okay oh the uh, name of agni is the first uh, name in the rigveda so agni should be most powerful no agni is the weakest person no why is fire a weakest person okay try try to make a uh, matchstick okay burn a matchstick what will happen there is fire now this fire is degrading itself the fire is degrading itself while giving light to others so what will be what will be the output the output will be negative fire is produced because you are degrading the compound that is producing fire and when you produce fire that compound is being exhausted so with time there is a degradation in the compound that is producing fire so you think fire element is very good no fire element is something that is making you degrade in life what is giving you an upgrade water element is giving you an upgrade because water element holds the prana getting ever so let's not talk about elements in detail but like over here we are talking about sounds okay. so our language is made from the peculiar effects of sound and from this effects of sound everything is vibrating inside the body we just have to catch where exactly the vibration is going inside the body where exactly it is going okay So let's go into a bit deeper okay i get i think the camera just moved So even the names of the swars are made in that way to understand where the effect is going sanskrit sanskrit is itself self explanatory language everything is explained into sanskrit and sanskrit is explaining everything okay so let's talk about the seven swars okay let's talk about the seven swars it is you see this is going to be a very interesting topic sa re ga ma pa ka ni sa okay so these are the seven swars arranged on your spinal cord the skull and the pelvis becomes the two round lobes the spine becomes the linear center this is how this is vena okay this is vena vena is the representation of skull pelvis and the spine the skull pelvis and the spine the skull pelvis and the spine okay now if you see clearly see this sa sa is the entrance and the exit point of the nose okay consider the, what is the name of this sa okay all the seven swars are given a name 
This sa is called shagaj, re is called rishab, ji is called gandhar, ma is called madhyam, pa is called pancham, dha is called dhaiva, and ni is called nisha. Okay, so let's talk about the names. The names would be the self explanatory into itself. The names are going to explain everything. Everything. Okay, so let's talk about any one of these. Okay. Let's talk about Dhaivat first. Okay, let's talk, let's talk about Dhaivat. Okay, what is the name Dhaivat? Dhaivatta. Okay. What is the beginning? The beginning is Dha. Let's talk about the end first. Okay, see the ending. The ending is the. What is the? Where is the? The is over here in the sky limit. Okay, Jupiter. So, sky limit. So, what is the fruit of the third eye? What is the fruit of the third eye? The fruit of the third eye is the suffix. Taipata. The suffix is the change in your sky element. Okay, with the third eye, you change the metabolism of your body. When the metabolism of the body is changed, the pH of the body is changed. When the pH of the body is changed, your stomach and your mechanical system of the body is changed. So indirectly, what is it changing? It is changing the sky element of the body. It is changing Jupiter. Moreover, it is also connected with your small intestine. Your small intestine is also secreting few hormones which are directly connected to your third eye. And those are which, which are responsible for your mood. Okay, now now talk about the. Okay, the starting point. The. What is the? Where is the? The is again in the sky element. So the starting is also sky element. So where from where does third eye get getting its energy? Third eye is getting its energy from the sky element itself. Okay, so Jupiter is from where the third eye is getting the energy, and Jupiter is where the third eye is getting its result. Okay, the fruit. The sky element. The sky element is responsible for the third eye and sky element is the fruit of the third eye. Jupiter is responsible for the third eye. Jupiter is the fruit of third eye. Okay. So, let's know. Let's talk about the uh, stage when you are not born. So, okay. When you are in the, uh, in your mother's womb. When you are in the mother's womb. In the gastrula stage, when you, your body is getting formed. Okay. From blastoria to glastoria. Okay, when, when your body is being formed, okay, from tiny creature you are formed, what is the first thing that is getting formed? Do you know? What is the first thing which is formed inside your mother's womb when you are becoming a baby? Before the stage of your baby, okay, before the stage of your baby, before you are turned into a small baby, from minute cells, from minute cells, a group of clusters of cells when you are becoming something okay when you are becoming something what is the first system which is created it is the gut the gut is created first in the gastrula stage okay there is a stage where your gut is first produced. After the gut is produced, after that brain is produced. So even before the brain, formation of the brain, there is the formation of gut. So understand the Rig Veda. First of all, what is the Rig Veda? Rig Veda is the formation of the universe. It is talking about how the universe was formed and the universe is inside you. So it is the, the complete Veda is based on the formation of you inside the womb of your mother from zero from tiny minute cell to a big baby inside the womb that is Rig Veda nobody has understood Rig Veda like this but Rig Veda is something which is explaining you the formation of yourself from minute cell organism into different stages and how a baby is formed inside the womb of the mother. 
the womb of the mother is characterized as the nature. It is the nature where you are being formed. Okay, so what is formed first? First of all, gut is formed. After the formation of gut, there is some different formations in your body. And we are not talking about genetics right now, so I am not going so much deeper into the formation of how humans are formulated inside the womb. But just for the knowledge, the first thing which is formed inside the womb of your mother, the first thing which is formed of you is your gut. After the formation of gut, then the brain follows. But the first thing is gut. Okay. That is why we say gut instincts are always right. Always. So we were talking about Dhaivat. Okay. So Dhaivat is the third eye. Huh? Six chakra or say Ajna chakra. See all the seven souls represent one of the chakra of the body. And all the seven chakras are aligned on your spine. That is your center part of the vena. The sa is connected with the skull and the pelvis both. The lower sa and higher sa. The crown chakra and root chakra. Both are having the sound of sa but with a different frequency. We are coming into frequency. So talking about dhaivat, the sky element. Dhaivat takes energy from the sky element gives its fruit to the sky element. So where, where the energy is taken from, it is consuming the energy from Jupiter. It is also giving the fruit to Jupiter. And, and, and where the process is being done, the process is being done in I, I and Vol. Okay, I and Vol. Okay. So I is the Sun, Va is the Rahu. Okay. Va is the Rahu, I is the Sun. Okay. So as I told you, this 12 vowels represents the 12 meridians of the body, the 12 adityas. These 12 meridians are responsible for the entire balance of the body, entire balance. Now we will talk about these meridians later on, but just for giving a rough idea, this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, the 6th meridian. Okay. So this bhaiwas is connected to the 6th meridian of the sun. Okay. And Va, Ram, fourth thought of Ram. Okay, there are four thoughts, four major thoughts. Again, we'll talk about it later. So, what is the sixth meridian? The sixth meridian is the liver meridian. What is the liver meridian doing? Liver meridian is producing the bile juice. It is also producing the pH of the body. Okay, it 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 adjusts the pH of the body. Okay, it will adjust the pH of your body. So what is it doing? See, see what is the dhaivat doing? What is the ajna chakra doing? Okay. See, consider, see, it is the self-explanatory. Everything is understood if you go deeply. See, this dhaivat is the sixth swar. This sixth swar is connected with the ajna chakra. What is ajna chakra doing? Ajna chakra is taking its energy from the sky element, that is Jupiter. The ajna chakra is taking energy from the Jupiter. That is why we say guts and third eye is connected because uh, there is a release of few hormones in your intestine which are which directly affect the uh, uh, subconscious mind which directly affect uh, the third eye it directly affects the ajna chakra okay so that is why it is taking the energy from the sky element it is taking the energy from the jupiter and what is the result the result is a intuitive intuitive decision okay. it, 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 it also takes decisions from the source okay you increase your vibes over there Okay, your subconscious mind is ruling. You change the mood. Okay, the alteration in mood takes place. Everything, the complete hormonal balance is uh, changed when you change your sixth chakra or third eye. Okay, so where, where it is giving the fruit? The fruit is again given to the sky element. That is the the metabolism of the body changes, and as soon as the metabolism of the body changes, the stomach changes. The digestive process changes. So this third eye, Taiwan, is taking energy from the sky element Jupiter, giving its fruit to the sky element Jupiter. And what is in the between? In between, what is it doing? All the processes is done from Sun and Rahu. The Sun, the sixth meridian of the Sun, that is liver meridian. Okay. And the fourth thought of Rahu. What is the fourth thought of Rahu? There are four main thoughts of life. Dharma, Artha, Kam, Moksh. 
So over here the fourth thought of Rahu is moksha. You are getting liberated from your third eye. You are getting liberated about your desires and everything. Okay. So the fourth thought is active and the sixth meridian is active. Okay. So this liver meridian is active and processing with the thoughts of moksha in between. Okay. So this is the third eye chakra or rajna chakra, the sixth chakra. Okay. So everything is over here. You just need to find out. That is why I say Sanskrit is amrit. Because all the vidyas are inside it. So let's see. See, dhari, va, ta. Okay. Subconscious mind. Six chakra. Dhari, va. Now you say you just give this one example. No, I can, I can give you also an example. And everything is going to correlate. Okay. Everything is going to correlate. Okay, let's, let's take another example. Let's take the example of Gandha. First of all, if we do something with shape of Gandha, what is it? Gandha plus Aha. What is Gandha plus Aha? It is the digestive system. It is the third sound, the third chakra, the Manipura chakra. Okay. Where there is Gand and where there is Aha. Gand, Aha. Okay. See, Gandha. What is the suffix? The suffix is Ra. What is the prefix? The prefix is gun. Whenever there is a half letter, we would take it in the first part. Okay. So the prefix is g and half of the n. What is g? Where is g? See where is g? G is fire. That is Mars. What is where is no? No is over here. Sky, Jupiter. So when we talk about the Manipura chakra, the solar plexus chakra, where it is from where the, it is getting energy, it is getting energy from fire and sky, it is getting energy from Mars and Sun. Okay. Because see what is a stomach? Stomach is a muscular bag. Stomach is a muscular bag. So do we have to consider stomach in muscles or do we have to consider stomach in digestive system? Okay. We have to consider it in some in, in an intermediate place where a muscular organ, the organ of mass, is acting for the organ of digestion. The organ of mass, the organ of muscular system, is acting for the organ of sky element, the organ of Jupiter. See? Everything is connected. Mars and sky. Mars and Jupiter. Fire and sky. Okay. And where is the output? Output is Ra. Where is Ra? Ra is Rahu. Output is in Rahu. What is the second source of output of Rahu? Earth. Meaning, what gives me to life? Food gives me to life. If, if you can't eat, where is life? Where is no life? And again, I told you, I told you many times, what you eat is how you think. What you eat is how you think. What you eat is how you think. Change what you eat. Change how you think. Okay. So again, see. Where is the where is the suffix? Suffix is ra. What is ra? Ra is rahu. So the change in Manipura chakra is the change in rahu. That is why Jupiter and Rahu are in exchange. They don't like each other. Because Rahu consumes the energy of Jupiter, Jupiter consumes the energy of Rahu. So if your Rahu is not good, where a Jupiter? If your Jupiter is not good, where a Rahu? What happens when Rahu and Jupiter are in clash? Rahu and Jupiter, yo, what is it called? A Kalmuthi. Okay, sudden death. Because the energy is clashing. Somewhere it is going to affect Mars, that is your heart. And what is in the between? In between, where is the processing? The processing is in the. Where is the? The is Jupiter. So all the process which is taking place is taking place in the Manipura Chakra. Itself. Okay. Because where is absorption taking place? Absorption is taking place in the intestine. Where is the pH balance is taking place? It is taking place in the stomach. 
where is the bile juice taking place? It is taking from the liver. Okay, where it is all connected? It is all connected in the third chakra or Manipura chakra. Okay, so when you talk about the third chakra, the dark, where it is consuming its energy, it is consuming its energy from Mars and Jupiter. The Mars, okay, the fire element over here, is the bile juice. The bile juice is the fire element. It is the muscular element. What makes a person masculine is a powerful liver. What makes a person feminine is a powerful kidney system. Or says spleen. Okay. But moreover, let's talk about over here. The masculinity in anyone is governed by the liver. If your liver is strong, you are more, uh, uh, more of a masculine person. Okay. So over here, liver and stomach are playing key roles in Manipura Chakra. Mars and Jupiter and the input, the energy is consumed from the Mars and the uh, Mars and the Jupiter. Okay. That is liver meridian and Jupiter. Okay, the sky element. So what is what is Jupiter? Jupiter is what you are eating. Okay. And what is Mars? Mars is the pH. What is how is pH balanced? It is balanced from the pile juice. So this is how this Gandhar is made. The sound of the Manipura Chakra. Gah. Okay, the first one was Gah. There is a change in frequency. Why? Because you have to catch up where internally internal vibrations are going. You, you can't speak go like go. Okay. Because when you speak go like go, okay, in a very bad frequency, the vibrations are not reaching your Manipura chakra. So, frequency is very much important, just like the sound. Okay, over here, we are talking about the sound. When you want to learn about frequency, you need to learn the Sangeet Chastras. Okay. That is why, see, our Sangeet Chastras are also very, very, very intellectual. Okay. But, see, there are, uh, what you say, uh, different swars in different rags. Okay. So, why do we have special timing for rags? Let's say, uh, in, in rag Bhupali, the sound of ga is major. Okay, ga is major. There is a lot of sound and lot of swars related to ga, and it is not to, to be sung in the afternoon. Why? Because afternoon you have taken lunch. Your Manipura chakra is all, already filled, and you can't focus on the gandhar again and again and again. Already your focus is on the gandhar. Ready? If you see, uh, the rags that are meant to be sung in the morning, they would be having all seven swords because you have to activate your mind. You have to activate your mind. So you are increasing the sounds of alertness, increasing the sounds of spontaneity. So there is more of the sounds of the knee and of the abhosa. Why? Because you are activating your brain. The rags that are to be sung after the evening, after the sunset, would be having a lower tone, the lower frequency. They won't be having the sound as me and the abosa as the main swar. Why? Because you you are going to sleep. You have to reduce your alertness. If you, if you hear those sounds at night, okay, you will increase your alertness at night. Okay, so even the timings of the rags are uh, uh, placed very very systematically, very systematically placed. Okay. So talking about this Manipura chakra, Gandha. Where it is getting energy input from fire and Jupiter. Where the processing is done, processing is again done in Jupiter. And what is the result? Where is the result shown? The result is shown in Rahu. That is, Rahu is your thoughts. How you eat, or what you eat is how you think. Try to eat more sweets, more sugar, dark chocolate in the morning. Your mood is going to completely change. And now you are a completely different uh, thinking zone, thinking pattern. You are a different person. Okay. Try to just eat uh, what you say, uh, black pepper and uh, all the hot spices and chili. Try to eat these three things more for one week and see how uh, hyper and indecisive you will become. But because you change your intake, whatever you take is how you think. Your Rahu is taking energy from the six tastes. You know, there are six tastes. The six tastes are affecting six parts of your body. There are six tastes, six main tastes, okay, if you don't know. It is called rust, 
seven days. Sorry, seven dress. There are seven dress. Okay. And the one who is knowing all the seven dress becomes the holder of Saraswati. That is why the name Saraswati came. Sa, ras, vati, the holder of all seven tastes. Saraswati. Okay. I am not doing it right there. Again, I am getting misdirected when I am giving out a bulk of knowledge. But let, so we understood Gantar. Okay, let's take some more example. Let's take one more example. Because I think people will think that okay, you are just making this up. But no, I can give you also an example. Okay, let's let we talk about Gandhar, we talk about Devat. Let's talk about Risha. Okay, Ray. Okay, Risha. What is the what is the fruit? The fruit is ba. What is ba? Ba is air element. Okay, the fruit is given in Saturn. Air element. Okay. What is the intake? The prefix is re. Re. Okay. What is re? Ra is Rahu and E is Sun. So Rahu and Sun. Okay. And what is Sha? Where is the processing done? How it is performed? Is Sha? That is K2. Over here. K2. Right? So see, this is Risha. Re. What what is the second chakra? The second chakra is Sakra Swadhisthana. What does the Swadhisthana chakra do? The main thing which Swadhisthana chakra does is the cleaning of your body. It cleans your body. Okay, that is why it has kidneys. It cleans your blood. It cleans your body. That is what Swadhisthana chakra does. Re re. So when you speak re, you are focusing on the swadhisthan chakra. The swadhisthan chakra, you are focusing on cleaning your body. You are focusing on kidneys. You are focusing on bladder. So now, see the fruit. Where is the fruit? The fruit. What 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 fruit are you getting? The fruit of what you are getting is ba. What is ba? Ba is Saturn. What is Saturn? As we talked in the last video, Saturn is cleaning. It is your urinary system. It is your excretory system. It is your kidney system. Okay, so exactly see, exactly fit it. Re, Risha, Ba. What is Ba? The fruit. The, where is the fruit? The fruit of the sound Re, the fruit of the sound Risha is actually at your kidneys. Okay, and what does it do? It does the work of cleaning, as we are talking about. Saturn is cleaner. It cleans everything. And where it is getting energy from? It is getting energy from Rahu and Sun, Ra and E, the first, second, third, the third meridian of the body, and the second, the second swar of Rahu, Earth, meaning, okay, meaning plus what is the second? Uh, what is the third meridian of the twelve meridian? It is later meridian. See, until and unless you are not cleaning your body, until and unless you are not, not cleaning your karma, until and unless you are not cleaning the waste inside your body, everything is going to accumulate and you are going to die. So there is one another thing which is giving meaning to life, it is the process of cleaning your karmas. So this is again related to earth. You are getting a meaning to life. Getting it. So see the intake. Where is what is the intake of this energy? It is depleting the Rahu and Sun. See the energy is taken from Rahu and Sun. And what is the fruit? The fruit is Saturn. That is why Sun and Saturn are opposite. Because in the process of ray, in the process of cleaning, in the process of Saturn, a lot of energy is taken from Rahu and lot of energy is taken from Sun. The energy of the Rahu and Sun is accumulated and uh, processed by the kidney and urinary system. That is why Sun and Saturn are opposite planets. Those who are those who can understand and learn psychology, there is a process called ADHD. Okay, ADHD phenomena going on inside your body. That is, the ADHD is a process where the kidneys provide water to the brain. Okay. The water.
water is provided again to the brain from the veins over here, behind the ear and over here, from this, from this veins. I forgot the name, but that is the ADHD syndrome. The, whenever the brain needs water, the water is provided in reverse order. That is ADHD. This is a ADHD syndrome also, but we are not going deeper into psychology right now. So, talking about this Risha, where is the energy taken? Energy is taken, taken from the Rahu and Sun. So, it is depleted. And where the energy is going? Energy is going to Saturn. So, this term, as we all know, the second chakra. That is why when we speak, Ray, 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 you are depleting your Sun. And what are you increasing? You are increasing your Saturn. And what is being processed? The process is taking place in Ketu. Shock. Ketu. And what is the first word of Ketu? In Ketu we consider it rivers. Over here we consider in every uh, in Rahu we consider it as Dharp, Arth, Kam, Moksh. In Ketu we consider it rivers. Dharp, Arth, Kam, Moksh. So it is Moksh. So over here we are getting Moksh. You are getting liberated from all the waste. That is what is being processed in the Risham. All the waste is getting liberated out of outside. Okay. You are getting liberated. You are getting cleaned. That is what is a moksh for the body. What is the moksh for the body? The moksh for the body is to be clean and healthy. When the body is healthy, you are in the state of liberation. Okay. Okay, so this is the ratio. Everything fits. You just have to focus on these things. Okay, so this is the ratio. Focusing on the Swadhishtha chakra. We talked about Dhaivar, the third eye. We talked about Gandhar, the Manipura chakra. We also talked about Risha, the Swadhishtha chakra. Now let's talk about Madhyam, the heart chakra. First of all, as the name suggests, it is the middle chakra. See Madhyam. The last word is Yam. It is consists of Ya. What is Ya? Ya is again Rahu. And Am. Am is again the meridian of the sun. So where is the fruit going? The fruit is going to the sun and Rahu. Just because your heart is pumping, your brain can bloody work. Your brain can send signals just because your heart is working. If your heart is in the lower state, if your heart is not giving enough blood pressure, if your heart is not providing enough energy to your brain, your brain is not able to focus. Your brain is not able to send signals. So in order for your brain to work precisely, you need your heart intact. That's why the, the fruit of the heart is the brain. The fruit of the heart is the brain. The suffix on the heart chakra is the brain. What is the prefix? Where it is getting energy from? Ma. Where is Ma? Saturn. Okay, air element again. Is it the air which is responsible for the heart? It is. Obviously it is. It is from the lungs what you are breathing. Okay, that's why we do pranayam. See again, see the, see the suffix. Prana, yam, mat, yam. See, everything is connected. Everything. Both are giving the fruit to the Rahu and Sun. Prana, yam, mat, yam. The fruit is again yam. Okay. So, see over here, air. The air is giving energy to the heart chakra. It is how you breathe. That is how your heart chakra is maintained. Okay. Only a person who knows who knows complete art of breathing can magnify the heart chakra magnificently. Okay. Magnificently. If you know the art of breathing, you are the master of heart chakra. Okay, master. So what is the correct that is why we do pranayam? See, there is another opinion, okay. When you get angry, you start breathing faster. 
or when you breathe, when you start breathing faster, you get angry. Again, a thought to be thought on. Thought to be thought on. <laughs> yeah, but yes, real. Is it because of your anger that you are increasing the frequency of your breathing? Is it because that your brain, in a frustrated thought, signals your lungs to breathe faster and because of that faster breathing you are getting angry. It is the both way. In my perception, it is your breathing that is why you are getting angry. You control your breathing, you change your breathing, you change how you breathe. Within 5 minutes your anger will die down. I will not say calm down, it will die down. No matter how angry you are, no matter you want to shoot someone in the head, okay, no matter that rage or anger is, is inside you and you have that much anger that, okay, I, I am going to shoot this person. Just give five minutes to yourself. Just give five minutes to yourself. And in that five minutes, breathe. Breathe in. Hold your breath inside. For twice amount of time you are breathing then give out, breathe out. Then again hold your breath without any air inside the lung. Twice. Then again breathe out. You do this seven times or five times. No matter how angry you are, in within five minutes your anger will die down. Within five minutes you will be calm and chilled. What does it conclude? It concludes that it is your breathing which causes sudden mood changes. Who is a moody person? A moody person is a person who can't control his breath. A moody person is a person who doesn't know anything about breath control. Yes. Your mood is changing because the systematic way of your breathing is changing. It is the system of your breathing that makes up a mood. If you want to change your mood, go and change how you breathe. See, there is a way of breathing. Okay, you intake this much, then you exhale this much, then you again intake this much, then you exhale this, much. then you again intake this much, exhale this, this much. So, if you intake more, intake for more time and exhale for less time, you will be increasing your mood. You will be a very, you will be in a very good mood. In reverse, okay, in, in reverse, if you are taking a very small breath inside and you are giving out a long breath outside, your mood is definitely going to go down. So what you have to do? You just have to control your breathing. You control your breathing, you control everything. You control your breathing, you control your heart. You control your breathing, you control your heart chakra. When you control your heart chakra, you control your brain. That is Rao Hansen. When you control your brain, you control your hormones. When you control your hormones, you control your mood. Everything. All you need is to control your breathing. But it is a very difficult task for everyone to control your breathing because people don't focus on their breathing. People focus on everything that is outside. And when you want to control your breathing, you have to leave focus from everything you are focusing outside. You have to focus on things which are inside. Only then you can control your breathing. So coming back. Where this heart chakra is taking energy from? The heart chakra is taking energy from Saturn. It is taking energy from air, air element. So that is why being near pure air, being near nature, it relieves your mood. And being in a close environment, being inside four walls, it is going to degrade your mood. See what happened in Covid. I am going to say this loud and clear. People are not dying because of coronavirus. People are dying because of the treatment of coronavirus. People are not dying because of the coronavirus. People are dying because of the treatment of coronavirus. I am treating it right. What is coronavirus? Coronavirus is the virus of air. So do you have to put those people inside a four wall chamber may and give them a white room treatment. You know what is a white room treatment? 
You see everything white, 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 and another person is also wearing this white clothes. Everything is white, white, white. This was a form of torture. White room torture. That there was a white room torture. You are torturing people, especially of old age. What good it will bring to them? Is it going to heal them? No. It is going to degrade their heart chakra. It is going to degrade their heart chakra. Their breathing capacity will go down. They are going to exhale more and intake less. No matter you put them on a ventilators, no matter you put them on oxygen cylinders, they are definitely going to die. What is needed is go and give them fresh air. Go and give them fresh air. Everything is going to be solved. Okay. Let's not talk about this controversial topic over here. But that is Matiyam, okay, so take the middle thing, okay. Dhyo, okay, means just take Dha over here, because we talk Ya, Ya, what in the last part, okay, so where is Dha? That is over here, sky element. So where the processing is taking place? Processing is taking place in the Prana. That is why all the processing of the heart chakra is taking place in the Prana. Okay, the sky element is processing everything. The Jupiter is being processed. Because also indirectly, when your heartbeat change, there is a change in the release of few hormones inside your intestine and there is also the change in the release of bile juice and, and, uh, and the gallbladder also changes. There is a change in the entire pH of the stomach. Okay. So this is what is changed by Madhyam. Madhyam is the heart chakra. When you, when you want to focus on your heart chakra, where, where the energy of the heart, where, where, where uh, heart chakra is taking energy is from, the heart chakra is taking energy is from Seta, that is air. Where it is giving the fruit, it is giving fruit to the sun and Rahu. And where is the processing? The processing is done in the sky element, Jupiter. That is why if your heart chakra is not proper, you will have problems of constipation or diarrhea. The, what is the symptoms of the medicines of this virus? Constipation. It causes constipation. See again, you are degrading people. You are not healing them. You want people to die. You want to reduce the population. Or you want a less burden on the economy by reducing the old age people. Whatever the reason is. Okay. So this was Madhyam. Similarly, we talk about Pancha. Okay. We talked about Rishabh also, right? Yes. So let's talk about Pancha. Okay. What is the first thing? Pan. Pa and An. So this An is again a meridian. A and Na. A is the meridian and Na is half, it is sky. So, Sun and Jupiter. Okay. What is Pa? Where is Pa? Pa is again Saturn. And where it is ending? It is ending at Am, that is Sun. Okay. Where the processing is done? Processing is done at Cha, that is water or Venus. See. Where is the processing? Where, what is the throat chakra? Throat chakra is also Venus. Where is the processing done? When we speak pancham, when we speak the sound of pa, in the throat, Venus. Okay. What is Venus? Venus is also water. What happens when we speak a lot? We become thirsty. When you become thirsty, what do you need? You need water. So more water you will take, more Venus will be stronger. The more Venus is stronger, the more better your voice is going to be. As simple. And see, where, where your throat chakra is where your throat chakra is taking energy from, the throat chakra is taking energy from Saturn, Sun and Jupiter. See, that is why it is your throat chakra which is consuming the most of the energy inside your body. It is Biologically true, 
the most of the energy consumed by any system of your body is your throat chakra. When you speak, you consume the lot, uh, consume a lot of energy. That is why people go into mourn runs. Okay. When you speak, you consume a lot and lot of energy. The maximum energy is consumed by your throat chakra. Maximum. Why? Because you need to speak. When you when you need to speak, you need to think. You need to decide. You need energies to speak. You need a proper breathing to speak. So every chakra is giving energy to the throat chakra. So the throat chakra can bloody speak. Okay. So the two main things, Saturn, Sun and Jupiter, all these things are giving energy to the throat chakra. That is why when you speak, you reduce your energy to the maximum, the fullest. Okay. That is why throat chakra is consuming a lot of energy. Okay. And what is the fruit? The fruit is arm. Okay, it is arm. The one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eighth meridian of the sun. So when you speak, you are changing your lung meridian. Okay. Eighth meridian is lung meridian. Okay. So you are changing your lung meridian. The fruit is going inside your lung meridian. It is just because you are speaking, you are exchanging more air. You are changing the cycle of your lung meridian. Okay. So the fruit is um. This paw, pond, this pond is where the energy is consumed from. The energy is consumed from Saturn, Sun and Jupiter. That is why throat chakra is consuming a lot of lot of energy. It is also consuming the Saturnian energy of air. Okay, because it is the air which is allowing you to speak. It is also consuming the energy of Jupiter. You need to eat because it is producing the mechanical energy. Your mechanical energy is also reduced. It is also taking the energy of sun because you need to think before you speak. So even if you want to utter two words, three words, you have to think. How can a person who cannot think can speak? Okay. So thinking ability also requires uh, speaking ability also requires a thinking ability. Okay. So in order to speak, in order to go into your throat chakra, three things are being consumed: sun, Jupiter, and Saturn. Okay. And where the processing is done, the processing is being done in the water element, Venus, throat. Okay, this is where the processing is done. And after the processing is finished, what is being consumed? It is consumed water. That is why you feel thirsty. Getting my point? So this was Pancham. As I say, don't speak anything which I have not myself researched about. So this was pop. There are still two more swars, okay? Shadaj and Nisha, okay? Want to speak about Shadaj and Nisha? Okay, let's talk about Shadaj and Nisha too, okay? How many minutes are gone? We have to make another video then. Make a part three, okay? It's going to be an hour. No worries, I'll make this video as exclusive for explaining the Raag and Sangeet Chastras or the Veena of Saraswati. This is the Veena of Saraswati. The skull, the pelvis and the spine, it becomes the vena of Saraswati. The skull, the pelvis, the spine. And how you utter words in meditation, and what are the vibrations of vocal cords reaching meridians inside the body is true essence of meditation. Okay. Let's talk about Nisha. Okay. In Nisha, where it is getting its energy input, it is Ni. Where is Ni? Na and E. Na is Sky and Mind. Jupiter. Plus E, the meridian of Sun. Okay. Right. Where is the fruit? The fruit is the fruit is in the Ni Sha. The. Okay, the fruit is in the. Where is the? The is Earth element. See. And where is the processing taking place? The process is taking place in shock, the bigger shock. Okay. 
Well, Nisha, bring us your money. That is A2. So, when you know, reach a crown chakra, because Nisha is your crown chakra. The seventh swat. See, where is the processing take place when you reach the crown chakra? It is taking place in Ketu. Just because you want to focus on the crown chakra. See, the crown chakra is not over here. The crown chakra is over here. And the lobe of the brain which is directly placed over here is the parietal lobe. The parietal lobe. What is parietal lobe responsible for? The parietal lobe is responsible for the motor skills. Okay, motor skills of the body. Okay, the balance. When you can balance on one feet. Okay. So, what is this nisha, this crown chakra made for? When you are going into the crown chakra, see, first of all, a person can either be on the third eye or the arjuna chakra or the crown chakra. The person cannot access both these chakras entirely simultaneously. You can access this alternative, but simultaneously it is not possible. Because when you talk about the Ajna Chakra, you, the energies are going to flow from your vestibular system, that is your ears. Okay, the energy is going to flow like this from your vestibular system and you stage and you and from here, here. When you are more focused on the crown chakra, the energy is going to focus and go out from the parietal lobe. Okay. So you can't do both until and unless your sun and moon is in same half. But let's not talk about that. So where is the fruit going? The fruit is going inside the mercury. What is mercury? Mercury is the sodium level of the body. And it is also the earth element. What does earth element do? As we talked about, it gives change in direction. That is why when you want to change the direction of your life, when you want to change the current inside the body, you focus on your crown chakra. Because mercury is also nervous system. When you want to increase your nervous system, see, what is crown chakra, your nervous system? What is mercury? Mercury is your nervous system. That is why the fruit, what is the fruit of nishad? The fruit of nishad is the suffix of nishad, which is the. What is the, where is the place? The is placed in mercury. The is placed in nervous system. Everything is connected. Okay, so this is, again, nervous system is getting changed. Okay, as I told you, mercury is nervous system. Getting my point? So, there is a change in nervous system also. Where the process is taking place is in the Ketu. Because from the crown chakra, you get stabilized. You get stabilized. Like, you get all kinds of stability. If only a person who can sit for 4 hours in one position can attain a perfection in the crown chakra because it, is, it needs that kind of stability. So you need to control your Ketu in order to attain a good crown chakra. You need to control your Ketu. Okay. And for that, it is Vishada, the second shah. Okay. What is the second shah of Ketu? Dharma, Arth, Kaam. You have to control your Kaam or Karma. Lord Krishna had a very good crown chakra, that is why he was the master in explaining Karma Yoga. Okay. So, the processing is done in Ketu, especially in the sound of third chakra, Sha, that is Kaam. How you act, what are your karmas? Because see, if you have done some bad karmas, okay, it is going to make you restless. You can't sit in one position. If you have done some bad, uh, if you have done some uh, hideous karmas, it is going to uh, generate guilt and regret. Again, you cannot sit patiently. So, if you see someone who is sitting without moving any body part like this, doing like this, doing like this, or you can sit like this for one to two hours, he is a calm soul. He has not done anything wrong in his eyes. He has never done anything bad with someone. So, his mind is focused. There is no external stimulus. By external stimulus, I mean no micro expressions in the body. The person is not showing any external stimulus because he doesn't have any karmic thought inside the mind. 
So that is why Shiva can sit for a long time in meditation because he knows that he has not done anything bad. So what is the restlessness about? A person only gets restless when, when his or her thoughts trouble them. Okay, and this thing happens only when you have done something which is making your thoughts wrong, your calm, your calm. If you have not did any bad karmas, okay, then your mind is automatically going to be stable. So you are going to pass that exercise. When you have done something wrong and, and somebody tells you go and sit and meditate for two hours, in two hours you will be continuously thinking, okay, this is my life, this is how I, I lived, I did this wrong with someone, I was angry with this person, would that person would forgive me, okay, I, I want revenge from this person, I want vengeance from this person, okay, I am this bad, okay, I, 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 I want to achieve this thing, I, I have this desire, I, I have to step on two person just to achieve my desires, blah, 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 blah. So it is your actions, it is your karmas who is stopping you from stabilizing. If you have not done anything like that, it is very easy for anyone to stabilize. If you put someone in a, in a place and make them think, and tell them you don't have to speak anything, just sit and think. And if they become restless, it is because their karmas or their actions are not good. If a person can sit like two hours, without speaking anything and after two hours they wake up with a smile. That means their mind is clear, they have not done anything bad in their life. They have nothing to regret, feel regret and uh, resentful and irritated, frustrated about. And they are satisfied with their life. So that is why meditation is a task of calm people. Meditation is a task for people who have not done anything bad. Because if you do something bad, whenever you sit in meditation, you are going to think about it. Your mind is automatically going to stop over there. Okay. So, see, Crown Chakra, again related to Ketu, stabilization of Ketu. Ketu is stabilized, your thoughts are diminished. So, the process is taken in Ketu. All the external stimulus is shown in the Ketu. You move your hands like this, you do like this. Okay, you do like this, you are hiding something. You, you do like this while you are speaking or hearing someone, you are thinking multiple thoughts inside your brain. Okay, too much of like this. So there are many micro expressions and all things which explain what are the hideous karmas of the person. You can easily look at somebody, somebody's micro expression and even you can easily find out the hideous karmas of that person. Easy. Within five minutes I can tell you, okay, this person is this. Okay. Never trust someone who, is, who leans on the left leg. Because someone who is, who is leaning on the left leg is someone who is always politically correct. Okay. They are not correct from inside. They are being politically correct. But always trust those people who are leaning on the right leg. Because the right leg, it is the left brain whose energy is going down. So people with more left brain energies are very trustful. People with more rightful energies are very political in nature. Never trust those people who are leaning on the left leg. Okay. And you can see easily. Okay. You go and give a person a simple task to stand over there for two minutes. Okay. And you will see automatically the person is going to lean on one leg. Okay. He would either lean on the left leg or either, either lean on the right leg. If you see him leaning on the left leg, Never bloody trust him in the life. Okay. If he leans on the right leg, trust him. So this is Nisha, the crown chakra, which is producing all these kinds of uh, micro expressions, external stimulus, the hideous karmas are being shown, the uh, restlessness, everything is shown over there. But the fruit of Nisha is in the nervous system. So whenever you check Nisha, me, what is mean cured is your nervous system. And where is the energy coming from? The energy is coming from Jupiter and Sun. The Manipura Chakra. Okay. And the E. Okay. This 1, 2, 3, 4. Fourth meridian of the Sun. Fourth meridian. What is the fourth meridian? The Gallbladder Meridian. The fourth meridian is the Gallbladder Meridian. From the Gallbladder Meridian and from the Sky element, the energy is coming. And this energy is going and utilized in, in the Ketu. 
after the processing the fruit is shown in the nervous system okay so this is isha so this was the last swar okay okay we also have shadaj here okay let's talk about shadaj and then we we'll land next i would i next we'll talk about something else okay so let's talk about shadaj See, ja, ja is the fruit, and sha is the what is utilized. What is utilized is ketu. Ketu is being drained whenever you are speaking. Sa, 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 sa. Okay. Where the energy is, where, where the fruit is getting, fruit is going to ja. That is water. Okay, minus water. The effect is shown in the water element of the body. Okay. And where is the processing take, taking place? Processing is taking place in the mercury, earth element, or air. Okay. So see what what what, what is this saw doing? Okay, why we have two saw? One is above saw and one is lower saw. Lower pitch saw, above pitch saw. Saw 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 saw. What is the change in this saw? So we have a change. We have a transformation. We are transforming ourselves from the patal lok to the brahm lok, from the brahm lok to the patal lok. And what? What planet is the significator of change and transformation? Mercury. So, what is the process of sa? The process of sa is to transform. Process of sa is to transform. Okay. So, whenever you see rags, okay, and you see aro and agro, which includes sa. Okay. So, it is changing your vibration. From one state to another state, from one lobe to another lobe, from one type of frequency to the another frequency. So, if you see, there is sa in in between the aro and agro, then the swar after sa would either be a high pitch sound, and the swar before sa would either be a low pitch sound, or it would be reverse. The swar before sa would be a high pitch sound, and the swar after sa would be a low pitch sound. Why? Because sa itself is processing the transformation. Okay. That is why I say it is it is on the both the ends. Okay, sa is on the both the ends. Did we notice in any of the other swars the processing was taking place in mercury? No. In any of the other swars, the processing is not taking it at mercury. So in order to process the transformation, there is only one swar that is sa, which is the lower swar and higher swar. That is why we have two sars. Okay, so we start from the source of transformation. We start from sa. Why don't we start from re? We can also start re ga ma pa da ni sa re. We can also start from ma ma pa da ni sa re ga ma pa. Why don't we do such thing? Okay, why do we start with sa? We start with sa because the processing itself is transformation, and the main motive behind the music is transformation. With music, you are transforming your soul. With music, you are transforming the inner vibration. With music, you are transforming the inner structure. That is why everything is created with nad. Nad is everything. Without sound, there is no life. Without sound, there is no nature. There is there is, there is one uh, what you say proverb. Nad dinam jagat sarvam. Nad dinam jagat sarva. Okay, the entire world is created and destroyed and processed by nad. Nad dinam jagat sarva. Everything is sound. Everything is frequency. Everything is nad. Nad dinam jagat sarva. The sustenance of this nature is sound. The destruction of this nature is sound, and the creation of this nature is sound. Everything is sound. 
See, this shudder is the only swar which is having the processing as mercury, which means this swar is processing transformation. This swar is processing transformation. That is why we have kept shudder at the ends. Okay, why? Because it is processing transformation. After this, we are we are going to change the pitch. Okay. So after this sa, we again go into a higher pitch. After this sa, we again go to a lower pitch. So who is processing transformation? Shudder is processing transformation. That is why we have kept the sa as the first and the last swar. Okay. This is a very profound thing. Very less people would have noticed this thing. This is a very profound thing. I don't know even your. Um, uh, Teacher who would be teaching music would uh, ask ask a music teacher why is only sa is the first letter why can't re be the first letter of sound ask them okay this is a very profound secret maybe I I don't this is not a secret anymore so it is because the processing is taking place in mercury the main agenda and motive of this sound so is to give transformation so every time we transform from one uh, what you say. From one frequency to another frequency, from one tal to another tal, the swar which changes the tal is sa. Okay, now where it is taking energy from? It is taking energy from ketu. Okay, this moksha, dharma, artha, kama, moksha. So it is taking energy from liberation. Okay, and where is it giving the fruit? The fruit is giving into Venus, water. So whatever the pran is, the pran is again getting into water. Water is the voltage of pran. What else is Venus? Venus is your respiratory system, lungs. Okay. So whenever you are increasing a ne next sapta, okay, we call it sapta. So whenever your saptak is increasing, you are going into higher saptak from, or you are going into lower saptak. The door is shudder or sa, and that door is sa because it is the significant of change. The process is moving. Getting my point? So this was how music and sangeet shastras are connected with our ancient Sanskrit, and we learned this because it is a very important part in meditation. Okay. Until and unless you know the chanting of exact words at exact frequency, you cannot learn anything about meditation. Okay, meditation is not like uh, Om. Om. No, nothing would happen if you continuously speak out Om anyway, any matter. Okay, because see, even Om has many different things. Okay, there is Om, and there is Om. Okay, a u ma, o ma. See, massive difference. See this o. Where is o? O is also over here. And ma, ma is. There is a change in sky element. There is a change in sky element, but this sky element also has O in it. Okay, see, there is a different meridian over here. This is a different meridian over here. Okay, no matter there is change in the sky element, but the meridian of the body is changing. See, over here it is Manipura chakra. Right, over here it is Root chakra. So when you want to move your energies from root root chakra itself, you have to say, Because it is bringing you calmness. The root chakra is absorbed all the thrills, 
all the hypernets and it is dissolved in my heart chakra. Okay. And, and the suffix is longer than the prefix because we are dissolving it. Now let's see with the om over here. So O and om. Okay, it is O. Suddenly there is a change again. Now my focus has turned into the Manipura chakra. From Manipura chakra and heart chakra, it is the focus. Okay. No matter you are changing the style event, no matter you are changing the prana, but what is change? The change is from the input. I, in this, I have taken energy from Mars or the root chakra, I depleted my root chakra and given my energy to the style element. Over here, I depleted my Jupiter. I depleted my Manipura chakra and gave it to the sky element. Okay, when I speak O M O, I am taking energies from my Jupiter and sending it to my prana. When I am speaking A U M O, I am taking energies from my root chakra. Okay, and then I am sending it to my prana. Okay. And there is a lot of difference in this. So, I was here today to talk about something else, but I don't know why things got around and I, we talked about some Sangeet Shastras and everything but it is a very good base for understanding Sanskrit. Okay, So I think no knowledge is wasted. So I will make another video for what I was here to talk about but it, it was great talking about this Sangeet Shastras okay, and how these swords are attached in the body. We were going to talk more about the Rig Veda but we took Chandeya Upanishad today and we learned something about chanting, mantras, Chandiya Upanishads and meditation right over here. So, thank you for joining me today. In the next session, I will again come back and we will talk something more about how Sanskrit and the Kal Chakra is made. Okay. If we don't take any such <laughs> in-between topic, but it was quite a good thing. Okay, Taking something else, but yet speaking on it, knowing something deeper aspect on it. Okay. So thank you very much. It was great time.